Hello, I'm Dave Calder from Flyer Magazine. We're covering the story of what's happening at Swansea Airport. It's not a happy place at the moment. Yesterday, I spoke to Bob Oliver, chairman of the Swansea Airport Stakeholders Alliance, about his take. We'd love to speak to someone from Swansea Council or the current operator of uh, Swansea Airport. So get in touch, guys. So, what is the problem at Swansea Airport? Um, I don't think you can say there's just one problem. Uh, some people categorise it in that way. I don't. Um, the issue with Swansea Airport is that it is owned by Swansea Council, uh, who took a decision uh, back in the early 90s uh, to lease it out. Uh, the council, you know, it was that time of year, that, that time of uh, uh, sort of government involvement where uh, people were looking to get private enterprise involved in the running of public facilities. Swansea Council, to be fair to them, um, they made a pretty good fist at the airport up until then. Uh, they'd invested a huge amount of money in it. Uh, and when they let the lease for it, it was a fully functioning airport with a full uh, suite of radio and nav aids from radar on down to uh, on down to the usual sort of flashing green beacon. 15 businesses on site. Um, the Air Training Corps were resident there. Um, I had three hard and two grass runways uh, running concurrent glider and uh, fixed wing operations as well as uh, bits of helicopter, microlight and so on, and a parachute school. Um, sadly, under a succession of commercial tenants, uh, the airport had declined to the point where in early 2021, um, the main runway was out of commission. Uh, the airport license had been withdrawn by the CAA in response to a uh, what they described as a systemic failure of management and safety at the airport. Uh, there were only two businesses left. Uh, well, three at the time. Another one's gone since. And there was no fuel. One of the hangars was unusable. The other one was in a very poor state of repair with unusable doors. And uh, generally speaking, the, the atmosphere at the airport had become pretty toxic uh, between management and the... Uh, uh, and, the, and the, the few people who were left at the airport. I mean, it had gone from resident population of around 30 or 40 uh, privately owned aircraft uh, to, where it, to where it was then, which was about 10 or 12. I mean, basically, the worst things had got at the airport, the more people moved on to other, other airports or simply gave up. And uh, so... Just to anticipate your next question, what do we do about it? <laughs> um, we, we formed the Swansea Airport Stakeholders Alliance. Uh, that started out uh, as just uh, resident businesses and owners, but very quickly expanded. And it was established from the outset um, on properly business-like grounds. So we set ourselves up as a not-for-profit company limited by guarantee against the possibility, which we hoped would never come to pass, but now looks increasingly likely, um, that we might at some point have to step in and take over uh, control of the airport from the council. You know, and that is a decision entirely for the council. You know, it's a democratic process. They'll do what they want. But um, so we set up the alliance and we felt that, the sensible thing to do was not just bitch about the state of the airport and the fact that there wasn't any fuel and the radio kept breaking down and the fire engine hadn't got any foam in it and that sort of thing, but to actually take a, a more rounded look at the way the airfield sat within uh, its community, within its landscape uh, and, with its, and within the local economy. And we did that by undertaking a very wide ranging and lengthy stakeholder consultation. And uh, we had, it was interesting because virtually everyone we spoke to and everyone who came and talked to us just looked around the airport and said, wow, this place could be great. But there's been a recent twist, hasn't there? The, uh, the, airport, the airport got its licence back from the CAA, but now it's lost it again. Uh, yes, uh, and that is uh, very sad, uh, but... Equally sadly, 
rather predictable. Um, the, the license has been suspended on, I think this is the fourth occasion in the last 10 years. Um, the most recent occasion was uh, a week ago. Uh, and it was as a consequence of an unannounced uh, visit by the CAA. Um, so uh, as virtually everyone who's going to watch this knows, uh, the CAA oversees licensed airfields. Um, it has a monitoring role and a supervision role and a regulatory role. And it exercises this in a number of ways. One of them is by periodic announced visits to do systems checks and so on. Uh, but they also have the option, if they wish, of conducting unannounced visits. Uh, and on this particular occasion, a week or so back, they conducted an unannounced visit. Uh, as a consequence of that, um, we understand that um, they uncovered um, systemic management failings um, and immediately suspended the license. This is deja vu. Um, this is exactly the same grounds on which the license was suspended in 2019. Uh, and with effectively the same result that the uh, the, the leaseholder is now uh, preparing a recovery plan, uh, which is going to be put to the CAA, as I understand it. Uh, the, mm. uh, neither the council nor the uh, nor the leaseholder are prepared to talk to the alliance, so we can only garner information from where it comes from, you know, various sources. So, and that's that's what's going on at the moment. Um, we understand um, that the tenant has until the end of the month to comply with all the, uh, the level one findings, of which there are a number, and we await to see what happens. But uh, we are, you know, a, a properly managed, prudent, professional organisation in the Alliance. Uh, we've got an enormous body of uh, expertise and experience in the aviation industry, both as as pilots, as aircraft operators, as businesses, uh, and uh, as airfield managers, safety managers, fire managers, and so on. So all of that experience and expertise rests within the Alliance. And we have always felt, I mean, ever since we were first set up in 2021, we've always done uh, a regular risk review. Uh, you know, any, any sensible business does that. <clears throat> And our, the highest risk on our risk register has always been that the license for the airfield would be suspended or revoked. Because if that happens, the lease for the airport says that the tenant shall forthwith surrender up the premises to the council. I mean, it gives the council scope to you know, give them some time to do it, and that's for the council to decide. Um, but the risk there um, for the Alliance and for all the stakeholders that it's uh, cooperated and, and worked with is that the council will be forced to close the airfield if they have to recover the lease. Because they've always said, and I quite understand this, that one, they don't want the airfield to shut. Two, they are very reluctant to put any serious money into the airport. Uh, and three, they want it to be a licensed facility because that provides the council with the comfort of a regulatory oversight on safety standards. Uh, and without those three things happening, then the risk is that they will just say, well, that's enough. And our vision for the airport, which is evolved in discussion with all those various people, and we talked to about 120 or different people, uh, is for a not-for-profit facility uh, which contains within it uh, a viable GA activity, but one which is properly sensitive to the landscape that it's in, to the community that it's in, uh, which takes account of things like the fact that it exists on a 450-acre site smack in the middle of the, of the UK's first ever area of outstanding natural beauty, the Gower Peninsula. Hmm. Uh, Gower Peninsula is, is a fantastically beautiful area. 
not only that, it also enjoys one of the uh, freest airspace environments in the country. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, when uh, the Osprey Yak Formation Team was based at Swansea, uh, we could start engines and get warmed up, which obviously takes a few minutes, uh, but we could take off from Swansea. Uh, we could uh, power climb to 1,500 feet, start a display practice, complete a full display practice, tail chase our way back to the airfield, land and be in the calf inside 40 minutes. Now, okay. name me another another airfield in the country where you could do that. Uh, you're probably going to have to go to Inverness, I think. <laughs> So it, 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 is there any chance of uh, the current operator meeting the CAA's requirements mm -hmm. by the end of February? Uh, well, obviously, we don't know what the CAA's requirements are. Um, it has been suggested to us that they are quite significant. Um, and, you know, for anyone uh, to be given notice um, at the end of the second week in February that they've got to do a whole range of stuff which includes not only management changes, staff appointments, physical changes to the airfield uh, and to its infrastructure, vehicles and other stuff, and do all that by the end of the month, then I think most people would, would um, sort of gulp and, and start looking at their diary. Well, that, that suggests to me that at, at the end of the month, the CAA is preparing to revoke the licence, not just suspend it. Well, and that's obviously up to the CAA. I mean, I think looking at what has happened, the CAA have come along and have said, there are these problems which are so serious that we feel we have to suspend your licence and you need to address these problems and your action date for correcting them is the end of the month. Now, logic suggests to us all that at the end of that period, the CAA has actually only got two options. Uh, either it suspends the licence for a further period, having been assured that whilst these things are not going to be done immediately, they will be done in the future. Uh, or it says, OK, we've, we've detected um, such significant uh, shortcomings uh, and they are so similar to ones that we've detected before that we feel we don't have an alternative but to revoke the license. Uh, obviously, you know, we would like to do all that we can to avoid either of those, you know, sort of any any outcome that loses us the uh, the option of a, of a licensed airfield. So have you heard anything from the council at all about renewing the existing operator's lease or somebody else, such as yourselves, taking it over? Uh, well, um, I should say that following our, our consultation exercise and, uh, and an awful lot of hard work by some very dedicated members of the Alliance, uh, we produced um, a, a proposal for operating the airfield that conformed to what our stakeholders... Oh, ah, there we go. There it is. Uh, Swansea Airport Commercial and Confidence proposal for the operation of the airport. And that basically um, is a, a, a policy option menu. Uh, and it provides the council with a range of options for ways in which the air co airport could be run and managed in the future. And obviously, it was presented by us as a not-for-profit body. Uh, and essentially, we're looking at, you know, in extremis, um, if no one else can do it, then we're prepared to step in and do it ourselves. Uh, obviously, the Alliance membership are not going to do it personally. Uh, we've got plans uh, and arrangements with uh, with various professional bodies and other airfields uh, to provide all the relevant staffing and experience and advice and so on. So we put that to them. And because we've been doing regular risk reviews and because our highest identified risk is loss of the licence and the consequences of that, um, then we've we've had and we've been constantly updating uh, an interim recovery plan for the airfield in the event that the license was suspended or revoked. Uh, and, and if that happens, and if the council then decides that they want to remove the lease 
uh, from the current tenant as the terms of the current lease allow, um, then the airfield is going to be left in limbo, potentially closed. Uh, so within hours of us hearing about the, uh, well, within hours of us seeing the NOTAM pop up on Sky Demon, mm -hmm. uh, we uh, did a, an immediate revision of our, of our recovery plan and sent that to the council uh, and said, okay, we've, we've seen this happen. It's always been the top of our risk register. Presumably, it's also been the top of yours and the top of the CAAs. So presumably, all of us are now reviewing our options. So I'd let, like to let you know, or the Alliance would like to let you know, that we have uh, a viable plan for securing the airfield in the very short term. Uh, and our plan basically says what we will do within the first 100 days. Yeah. And that includes uh, getting to grips with uh, the CAA uh, and all the other regulators, the people like the HSE and the fire service and so on, uh, to come up with a, to come up with, you know, a range of options for the way forward for the airport. It does sound uh, like this is going to cost a bit of money. So where's that going to come from? Uh, it, it'll cost money in the short term. Uh, but, you know, we've always recognised that this was going to be an issue uh, and our plan includes a, includes a full set of costings for how it's going to work in the short term uh, and our, the long-term business plan that we put forward, which obviously is, you know, sort of in abeyance, um, is also fully costed as well. Right. So when do you think uh, it's all going to come to a head? Uh Goodness knows, we thought it had come to a head um, at, at, towards the end of last month when uh, the council met to consider uh, an application for a, a new lease from the current tenant. Uh, and uh, to everyone's bemusement, um, the council accepted from its officers um, a report which said that uh, because the tenant fully complied with the terms of the lease, the council was obliged under the Landlord and Tenant Act to, to give him a new lease uh, and that uh, officers would, uh, and officers were apparently, according to the council minutes, authorised to go away uh, and negotiate the terms of a new lease with the tenant. Um, we were all extremely puzzled by that decision because uh, members of the cabinet have actually been to the airport uh, and they have seen for themselves that the airport is not open 350 days a year as required by the lease it's only open for 240 odd uh, they've seen for themselves that the entire uh, flight navigation and landing systems are no longer present uh, although the lease requires that they be repaired replaced and not removed, uh, they seem for themselves that the lease requires the airport have uh, refreshment facilities for the public. Uh, and they walked through uh, the airport cafe, which has been shut for over seven years. Hmm. Uh, they also saw that one of the hangars is still unusable because it's still waiting for repairs three years after the roof blew off. Well, it didn't blow off, but certainly it was damaged. Um, and uh, so they've seen that for themselves and they've sort of failed to notice that an airport monitoring group was set up by the council uh, at the instigation of the Alliance when we were set up uh, to monitor progress at the airport. Uh, it's never actually recorded any progress uh, in the 18 months it was working. Uh, uh, apart from the, re the resurrection of fuel services. Uh, and during the course of that period, the, uh, the CAA licence was, was obviously renewed, as a matter of fact. Um, and, uh, and they also failed to recall the fact that um, the council had actually served notice on the tenant under the Landlord and Tenant Act for, for breaches of the lease. Now, all of that is, you know, all of that is evident to any passerby, uh, and it was certainly known to the council yet they decided to accept a report that said, no, 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 the tenant's entirely compliant with the terms of the lease. Uh, and when I 
challenged the council on that. I know I spoke at the council meeting and I, I made all these points then. It's all on the public record. Uh, and afterwards, they uh, they wrote to me and responded to the 22 detailed questions that I put to the council uh, with a series of answers that, that I can summarise as follows. Uh, number one, uh, we're not prepared to talk to you about any of this because we have a commercial relationship with a tenant. Uh, number two, we took legal advice uh, and that's the basis on which we reached our decision and all that legal advice is contained in the report which we won't show you. <laughs> <laughs> so that being open and transparent. Okay, Bob, well, thanks very much for your time. Um, we'll, we'll keep a close, close eye on it. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed that, please give us a like, leave a comment, and subscribe.